from our studio on 24 Reed Avenue. This is John Higgins live on CHCO TV. I'm John Higgins. Awfully good to be with you. My guest on the show today, Gwen Smith Walsh. Now, Gwen, she is the provincial director of the Terry Fox Foundation. Gwen, so good to have you with us here today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. The Terry Fox Foundation, well known. Very well known. Well, well, well known. It's been, been years. Mm. How many years, the foundation? So it's the 40th year, actually, the 40th anniversary of the Terry Fox Foundation. So it's a huge year for us. And uh, yeah, we are still the same since day one, grassroots, and still have all the same values that Terry Fox uh, gave us uh, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. So you are, the, you are the provincial director of New Brunswick? And PEI. And Prince Edward Island. Yes. So you've got quite a, you've got quite a territory. Yeah, we do. And you're based in Fredericton? Yes, we're based in Fredericton, 605 Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. So, what's your day like? You're, you're busy. I know you're busy, because I've been trying to track you down. Yeah. So, so uh, in terms of being busy, we're always busy. Um, some people think that it's just leading up to run day, which this year is September the 20th, 2020. Mm -hmm. Which um, we're going to talk about. Yes, and, and some people think that it's mostly just leading up to that, but that's not true because we're also running a business and we're running a foundation and we have eight fundraising campaigns. So this time of year especially, um, I wake up and usually my phone is the first thing I look at and start looking at emails and mm -hmm. uh, social media and Twitter and so on and so forth and um, I go to work. I have um, two summer employees with me and a part-time administrator, but it's full tilt from <laughs> the moment you go in till the moment you leave and sometimes you don't get to leave in your nine to five job. So usually start early and, and uh, are late and then into the night you still work as well most of the time. I can imagine, yeah. I can imagine. What a found, what a foundation, Terry Fox. What a what a person. Mm. Born in Winnipeg. Yes, born in Win Win yeah. Winnipeg. Sorry, yes, yeah. July the twenty eighth, nineteen fifty eight. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know? Okay, to, let's just bring everybody up to date here about Terry Fox. Okay, he's been gone for a while. All yes. right. But here he was. He's this young man. How old? When he started. Run. He was um, 18 when he was diagnosed, so um, he started shortly after that, actually. Okay. T tell me the story about Terry. Tell me about how this started. How, how, did, this, how did this work? So this Terry work? was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, mm -hmm. um, and it was in the knee area, in the femur area. Um, so Terry ended up being in the hospital in a children's ward when he was diagnosed with cancer. So during that time, he's seen many, many children uh, going through a great deal. So. I guess he slept on it and he had a dream one night and decided when he woke up that I'm going to do something to change the face of cancer in this country. So he thought about something that he had read in a magazine um, and a book and decided that I'm going to run across Canada and raise money for cancer research because I want the hurting to stop. And that's where it began. In April 12, 1980, Terry dipped his leg in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland and uh, he started that Marathon of Hope. And never stopped until? Well, he never stopped until cancer came back um, in his lungs and he stopped in Thunder Bay, Ontario, which everyone would know. Okay, yeah, yeah. Went to every province? Yes, well, he started in Newfoundland, then it went to Nova Scotia, PEI, New Brunswick, Quebec, Ontario, so. And uh, he ran a marathon every day when he um, was on the road. And what's a marathon? 42 miles a day. So he ran 42 miles a day. Yes, on a prosthetic limb. Yeah, uh, yeah. That exactly. weighs quite a bit because I have um, an actual replica of it and to pick it up and to just even try to imagine how he did what he did was impossible, you would think. And, and no one has ever, ever accomplished something like that even till this day that Terry did. Totally amazing, I know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's, now, there would have been, uh, how does that work? He, was there people following him? Was there, you know? Yes, yes. He actually <coughs> had his um, best friend with him, Doug Alward. He drove the van. And then um, in May, um, during that time period, his um, brother Daryl, who decided not to even attend his own graduation, joined Terry on the Marathon of Hope. 
and then there was there was other people that would actually join Terry on the road um, okay. and support him um, and run with him and cheer him on. Well, I can remember that. I can yeah. remember people would come out. They know we knew he was coming, <coughs> right? So you'd want to go out and cheer him. Would some people run with him while he? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Lots of runners actually uh, ran with him. You can see some photographs in some of uh, the footage and the books that we have um, with people running with Terry. Mm -hmm. And it, it, be it started small with a little fanfare in Newfoundland, but as Terry kept going and news coverage was showing him, yeah. um, you know, running on the road, more and more and more people joined him. And mm -hmm. the largest gathering at the time, I can still remember uh, these photographs, is when he was in Toronto. And um, it was at the, the Sheridan at the, the time, yeah, the Four Point Sheridan. So, yeah. Really? It was incredible. It, the streets were filled and they were gathering so much money at one time. Somebody had an empty Kentucky Fried Chicken box or bucket at the time and they had to start gathering money and, and different things like that because there was so much revenue that was coming Terry's way. Right out of people's pockets as we're yes, standing there yeah. w as they're watching. Yes. As they're, as well, there was no e-transfer <coughs> or any of those things true. Like you're going to give, you're going to give right then and there. Yeah. So it was, it was people running. I still remember some stories in New Brunswick. Um, there were some families up in, uh, towards the western side of the province that were running out of their houses and handing Terry money. Um, yeah, I remember one of them was in Grim. Um, I was going to say Grand Bay Westfield, but that's not correct. It was in Grand Falls. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so yeah and, and one of Terry's books, actually, he mentions a family, the J.C. family, at one point and saying how uh, wonderful this family was when he was on that open highway. And those hills were I astronomical. I, I can remember seeing those pictures of that yeah. long, yeah. open highway and him, yeah. you know, yeah. but, amazing. But he, um, yeah. And it's funny, a story uh, about Terry when he did come through New Brunswick at one point. Um, he had heard that there wasn't going to be a lot of fanfare in St. John. And uh, they were suggesting, okay, Terry, let's not go there. Let's take another route and change the route that we set out. And he said, there's no way. They're going to see what I'm doing and why I'm here. And I'm going to run through that and it'll be as loud as I can and honking horns and doing whatever I can to get people's attention to know why I'm here. Anyway, and the, the result of the day was a, was a much better one. Isn't that something? Yeah. Good. So the run was financially and, and was a complete success. Do you feel it? Do you feel it was a complete success? Yeah, so success? Terry asked at that time when he was running that he wanted a dollar from every Canadian. Okay. Um, and they actually surpassed that. I think it was three million uh, that people he raised. at that time. Yes. Yeah, in that short period of time. And it kept going, actually, mm -hmm. <clears throat> even after Terry uh, was off the road because he, um, cancer had returned and it went to his lungs, so he had to go home for treatment. Um, but one of the reasons in that September, that fall, um, when P Terry passed away is before he passed away, he asked his mother and his family, you know, you have to keep this going without me. We need, we, need to find a, we, we need to find a cure. Exactly. So he chose that date. That's why we have our uh, community event run in, on the third week and in September. So, oh, I was just so, yeah, so how Terry has, chose that. Was, when Terry was actually doing the run, you know, the money's coming in, right? Mm -hmm. How has it been over the years? Is it still, you know, the oh, yes. income? Yeah. yeah, we're doing really well. We actually have raised over 800 million now. Oh, oh. Um, so that's not thinking about this fiscal year. Uh, <clears throat> so that would have been up to last year's fiscal year. Um, and last year we were around $23.8 million that, um, that we raised. Of course, our researchers are always looking for more. Mm -hmm. um, but some years are better than others. And this anniversary year is usually a marker year for us, uh, being, being 40 the years. Being anniversary, 40 years, yes. amazing. Revenue amazing. always goes up on an anniversary yeah. year. Yeah. The money that is raised, Gwen, through the foundation goes strictly for cancer, am I correct? Am I right on that? Cancer research. Cancer research. Only cancer research. So right. close to 80% of every dollar that is raised goes yes. directly to cancer research. And so we have an, a leg of the foundation, it's called the Terry Fox Research Institute. And that institute takes those funds and they um, award those funds to different researchers that apply for those research grants oh, for okay. different, different yeah. forms and different types of cancer. Yeah. And that is throughout the whole country. So, for example, we have one of those examples here right in St. John with Dr. Anthony Ryman, um, who uh, was awarded funding for a study that he was doing. It's called molecular myeloma. 
Um, and the lucky thing with that, having it right in our backyard, is mm -hmm. that many people uh, were able to be part of the clinical trials. And some of the best news that came up from that, so your best case scenario would be if you were diagnosed with molecular myeloma, that you would have about five years. So people right now, because of this clinical trial, are in remission. Seriously? Yes. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. There was actually a gentleman from St. John who was part of the clinical study, was in the um, newsletter from the Terry Fox Research Institute that was a part of that study. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's good news. Excellent news. Is the, ter is the run only in, in Canada? No, we're in 32 countries, actually. 32 countries? Yes, 32 countries. So we're in... That means the Terry Fox Foundation is in 32 countries? Yes. Yes. Whoa. So we have runs in Vietnam, Beijing, uh, Abu Dhabi, um, I'm trying to think. And we have schools throughout um, Europe, uh, New York. Um, there's, there's so many. Um, but yes, we're in very many countries, actually. Yeah, large, large amounts. One of the biggest images I still remember seeing is watching uh, the people that were from Abu Dhabi running. And there were Sikhs and whatnot in full yes, gear and yeah. run it, running for Terry Fox. And you see the big Terry Fox signs, you know, in the background. And yeah, so. Isn't that yeah, something? Yeah, he's made an impact everywhere. Absolutely something else. So 40 years coming up. Yes. This is a big year. It's a huge year. We got a virus going around. We do. And we want as many people out running as possible. Yes. Right? Running, walking, biking. So I meant to ask you that. Do you have to run? No. No, no. you can walk no. too. It's a fundraising event. You can get on your little unicycle if you like. You can take your family and strollers, go on bicycles. You can do whatever right. you want. So the traditional run that usually happens, um, that one happened this year because of COVID-19. Uh, right. So it's still September the 20th, 2020, but it's one day your way this year. So it has a, a theme to it. So on this one day, you can get out and do it ever you would like as an activity. You can do it in your own little bubble or whatnot, but there will not be traditional runs like they usually are okay. um, at certain landmarks that are in different communities throughout New Brunswick and PEI and the country. So we still are raising funds. Um, in fact, we need people more than ever because cancer is not going to end today or tomorrow and still is affecting everybody and we still need those research dollars. And without those funds, we cannot fund those research projects and help people, something like the one that I mentioned that mm -hmm. it's at uh, UNB St. John with mm -hmm. Dr. Anthony Ryman. So those research studies still are uh, going on and researchers are still asking for those much needed funds. And of course, we don't fund just one type of cancer. We fund every single solitary type of cancer that exists. So we do all of them. Okay. No, no. What does that mean, Gwen? Different types of cancer. What, what does that mean? So there's so many different forms of cancer. So let's say um, if you think of one example that, you know, CIBC Run for the Cure is only for breast cancer research. I say, okay. Okay. So yep. we still fund breast cancer okay. um, as well as very like prostate cancer. Let's say, for example, the, um, we're talking about molecular myeloma. Um, lung cancer, brain cancer. Mm -hmm. There was a special project that's still ongoing right now um, with childhood brain tumors um, that are cancerous. So we, um, or the Terry Fox Research Institute actually took that upon themselves to make sure that we made that uh, a major part of funding. Um, because what happens sometimes with some of those children, you know, uh, I can only imagine parents receiving this news that, sorry, we've tried everything we can. Um, there's nothing else we can do. Wow. Um, so. There's an example of, you know, the $20 or that $100 that you decide to give us. We are helping so many people along the way, just like Terry asked us to. Um, and I've seen um, photos and pictures of some of those children that have actually been part of those research studies and dollars. And to see a smile on a, a child's face that is on our poster child or in a newsletter really? or whatever, yeah. I mean, uh, well, makes you very proud. When you, and I hope, I hope this is a fair question. The research, what does that, what does that mean? The research, what do they, what do they, they're looking for a cure. Yes. How do they choose? This is going to work. This is not going to work. How do they? So different researchers have different types of disciplines. Um, 
<clears throat> that they would study in as far as research, so on ecology. So there's, there's so many different specialties. Um, so as one example, somebody may be taking um, a virus and then injecting it into um, a tumor and they're trying to find not only a cure but all kinds of treatment regi regimes along the way because and not in one day you're going to have a cure for cancer. So right. every cancer patient is unique and their journey with cancer is unique. So you're not going to get two people that are the same. So they need to find as many avenues as they can to fight and beat cancer um, and to prolong the lives of others. So it's very complicated and it's very complex. And imagine. of course, I'm not a, a medical professional. I know that, uh, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. but I can tell you what <coughs> I've been um, educated on with some of our researchers that speak to us and, and when we have a, a conference amongst our own group with the foundation mm -hmm. um, and they will share some of their information and do presentations. So that's how we, we always learn and we're continuing to learn. But it, it's very complicated. So let's say, you know, somebody was diagnosed with um, stage four uh, glioblastoma, the same that we had our tragically hip hero, uh, Gordon Downey, diagnosed mm -hmm. with. So yes. that yes. particular type of cancer would need a specific type of treatment. I see. And depending on the stage of cancer that you're in as well, where it's located, and all the other complicated things that go along with that. So your chemo, your radiation, and different types of treatment. So someone has to study and research all that, go through clinical trials which uh -huh. takes years and years. And costs money, money, money. Without money, it's impossible. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So that's just one small little, you know, piece of an mm -hmm. explanation that uh, how much, uh, you know, research does cost, but how important it is that without those research dollars, we can't help people, basically. And so they need our help. The Now, the research... Are the hospitals funded? Uh, certain or? people do um, mm -hmm. research at certain hospitals, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, for example. So Princess Margaret is one example that you hear really? quite often okay. about um, that that hospital does a great deal of uh, research. So I do see studies that um, are going on there that are funded by the Terry Fox Research Institute through monies that we raise through Terry Fox uh, events, mm -hmm. community run, school run, special events, and so on. So. Yeah, that's one example. So many hospitals do have research programs there. Perfect. And universities as well. Has this changed the approach of how we attack cancer or is it or is Oh yes. If you Terry know, Fox was research. alive today. That's what okay, I was so say. Yes. so if Terry, let's say for example, was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, okay. Terry would mm -hmm. probably be alive today because of the really? research and the advancements that have been made in cancer research. I was going to ask you how how are we doing? Oh my goodness, it's changed. It's it's incredible. You hear about uh, people that are living longer um, mm -hmm. because of funding, um, such as what I'm speaking about in research. Um, you know, we don't have a cure, but there's some types of cancer that people are in remission mm -hmm. and they go for five, 10 year, 15 year checkups over time and they're still cancer free. I actually have a friend who is, um, I think it's 10 years right now, is cancer free. And people tell me that actually um, every time they go for that yearly or annual checkup that they said, I've won the lottery. Exactly. I've won the lottery. You okay, know. I can imagine. Yeah. What we're going to do, Gwen, let's take a break. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to be back. We're going to be back with Gwen. We're going to be talking about the Terry Fox Foundation right after these messages. Thank you. We are back with Gwen. Gwen Smith Walsh. And now, Gwen is a provincial director of the Terry Fox Fund and one busy, busy girl. Now, I, I do have to, I want to tell everybody this. I want to explain this. During the break, you and I were talking about, we all know somebody that's been affected by cancer. Most definitely. That's, that's amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, yes, I have an uncle, I have my mom, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, it's, it's, and this, as you said, without the foundation, okay, money for research, no money, no research. So that's how important this is. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Part of the treatment in the research, in the research, I want, 
Are there different types of chemo for different things? Uh, you know. Uh, yes. Again, like as I mentioned, I'm not a medical professional. No, I don't mean to. I don't but, mean to do. But that. I do know from experience, not my personal, but with my family, um, mm -hmm. with friends, um, and um, a little bit about chemo uh, here and there. So, like I mentioned earlier, not every type of cancer has the same treatment plan. Everybody's case is individual. So um, chemo can be taken in various forms. There's, there's oral treatment for chemo. There's also you know, intravenously and whatnot, which we hear a lot more about um, from different people. So what do, we, what do we hear most about when they say I'm on chemo? What do, what, uh, what? You hear a lot more about intravenously, That's I what would it assume. Is? Okay. Yeah, yeah, like my mother-in-law who's dies of cancer, she used to call it her baby bottle. I, was really? like, I wouldn't call it my, so she'd have a bottle that she would get going in the hospital and then she would have it for like three or four days okay. and, and it, it would just go through, you know, like a butterfly or whatever that goes in your arm. So, but then I do know of other people that uh, have taken it only orally. So. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So, and. So chemo is part of the research, the foundation funds. So researchers that are, you know, everything is to do with science and chemistry. So this is a form of the developments that have been made through funds from Terry Fox Foundation is different types of chemo. So way back in the day when my grandmother was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I remember we lived in, in Sydney, and outside the Sydney area in Nova Scotia, she got something called cobalt. You would never hear of that now. That's exactly, yeah. you don't hear of that anymore. No, so you would never hear of that now. So chemo, radiation, um, and surgery is always uh, on the horizon to do with different um, types of cancer for different people. But again, it's case to case situation. You really floored me when you said, with the knowledge today and with the research that has been done, Terry Fox would be alive today. Yes, because we have, we have survivors that's, that, that that's, have have been diagnosed with osteosarcoma and they're alive today. There's a little boy in Fredericton, which reminds me of, of Terry uh, quite often, the exact same type of, of cancer, um, actually had surgery, has his limb, is in uh, remission since years and years. So, yeah, so there is always a, a good story at the end of the day. There is, yeah. there is. And like you said, yeah. everyone has been you know, touched by cancer. Sometimes, unfortunately, we don't uh, you know, get survival rates uh, that we would like at a certain people, depending on their case and how far, you know, what stage they could how be in. How far advanced. So, yes. so that was, in part of the research, get tested. Is, uh, Absolutely. Right, you know, yeah. um, with guys like my age, okay, it's mm -hmm. prostate, get yep. Yep. checked, and right? That we funded a program for that actually, and uh, the results are uh, very, very amazing. Actually. Really? Yeah, I remember reading that in uh, some of the uh, the literature that came out from the Terry Fox Research Institute, and and how well that's done. And the other one is is lung cancer that it's that's done quite well. So they were research studies about five years ago or so, I recall. Isn't that something? So, yeah. as as far as advancing towards. Hopefully someday. Cure. Been, that's that's Terry's dream. Yes, advancing. A world without cancer. That's there yeah. you go. That's yeah. right where I was going. Yeah, a world without cancer. Do you, uh, Gwen? Do you think we're going to see a world without cancer? I can't speculate about that. That's, that's probably but not. I mean, you know. It, I can you, use some of those <coughs> things that remind you about Terry that you need to have hope. You need to have yeah. courage. You have to have passion about what you're doing, which uh -huh. is what I do. Uh -huh. um, and you have to believe. Yeah. So if, if you or I were di diagnosed today, the last thing I want to think is that, oh, I'm probably not going to survive. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to pass away. I don't have any hope. But you look at someone like Terry, who is a Canadian hero, he gave people hope. He gave people courage. And he still gives people courage I, I, today. That was my next. Yeah. We're talking 40 years later. Yes. He's still a hero. I guess he is. Isn't he? Oh, I yes. I mean, that has not gone away for, w for what he did. Yep. He was quite a character, actually. Was he quite a character? Oh, yeah. He was quite a character. He was very determined. If you ever read any of uh, the books that are out by Terry, and there's two new ones actually getting released oh. for the 40th anniversary by Penguin okay. Books this year. Okay. So um, some of the books, they'll talk about Terry and his character and his traits. Um, and, you know, he used to be quite a bit of a selfish person before he was diagnosed. Oh, uh, seriously? Yes, he was. And he said it took cancer to get him to change his personality and who he was and his values and his beliefs. 
So yeah, so that really resonated with him. But he was a very competitive boy. One of the stories I remember, Terry wasn't a very big guy, but he wanted to be a, a basketball player. And, <laughs> and many kids will know that because of our school programs that we have. And okay, well, okay. So Tell we can, me the rest we'll of this. talk about that too. Yeah. So Terry was told, "You're not good enough. Uh, you're probably not going to make it." Um, was shot down a couple of different times trying out for teams, never made it. Well, I guess there's stories uh, that I've heard from Fred, his oldest brother, and whatnot. And he'll tell these stories at schools that Terry was until it was dark, be out at in, at a basketball net outside and going over it and over it and right, over so it and going. And then yeah. he ended up being a point guard at Simon Fraser University. Really? That he went to school. So never give up hope. Isn't that he something? was determined. So and I, that I think and his personality and who he was really helped push him through that marathon of hope as well. Exactly. Yeah. You talk about school programs. Yes. The kids. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids weren't born. A lot of most of them. But they know who he is. Do, was, do they know who he they is? They know who he is. So our school programs are all across the world. So we have international schools um, as well that take part in Terry Fox events. But even in our own province in New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, which is part of my region, um, many, many schools uh, take part. Unfortunately, it's mostly Anglophone schools. We do have a deficit with French schools, but that is coming up and it's changing. Um, so last year we had a 17.5% increase in revenue with our school program um, in our region, which wow. is huge. Yes. Yeah. And so a lot of schools know about Terry. It's actually part of the curriculum and some of the, the studies to do with English oh, and really? social studies. Yes. Children will learn <coughs> about him. Teachers are very part passionate. So we call them run organizers. A teacher um, at one school or a principal or a VP will be designated as the Terry Fox run organizer. So that okay. run organizer will organize that event. All the classrooms receive educational materials, promotional materials oh, perfect. Um, to uh, learn about Terry, to fundraise in Terry's name. Leadership classes are huge within the high school, middle school. Um, uh, that age group, um, they uh, will organize those events and get great leadership skills from that as well. And even if you're out in public and if I was doing something at a UMB hockey game one night, we had Terry Fox night, and uh, when I was there, there was parents there with their children. They run up and they get so excited. Dad, Mom, it's Terry Fox, you know. That is amazing. It is. Like in elementary school kids, if I went there and I did Terry Fox trivia, they could answer those 58 questions, no problem whatsoever. They, they know who he is. I'm so glad you were telling me that because while I was driving down, I was thinking, my God, this is, gosh, this has been a lot of years, you know. Mm -hmm. And he did such a wonderful thing. Do kids know about today about what he did? Yeah, they do. Yes. Yeah. And he's a good role model. And in this day, in yeah. this age, we need role models like Terry Fox in I this guess. world, you know. And thank goodness. I mean, he did sacrifice his own life for others. Mm -hmm. But Terry's changed this world in so many ways. And, and sometimes I used to say to my own children, I have two girls, you know, <clears throat> if you're having a bad day, I say it more when they were younger, not so much now because uh, they're adults. But um, we used to talk about that. And I was like, well, guess what? Terry Fox persevered through this, this, and this. If you think that what you're going through is tough, Think about what he went yeah. through. You look know. what he went through, and not to discredit what, what was going on with them, but just yeah. to, as a good example, he's, he's, a, he's a huge role model for Even many, many. Even today, I love that. Oh, it is. I love that. Yes, and we have a school event that will happen um, towards the third weekend of, or sorry, the third week of September, following the third week of September, right. which is our National School Run Day program. So all the schools across Canada um, will take part in a Terry Fox event, and they have a flex day as well. Of course, it's different this year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a push for more online uh, fundraising mm -hmm. and more um, to do with um, event, you know, um, locations at your school that more be more in a classroom bubble and something like that. Yeah. But our schools are still keen. We're getting emails and uh, even though they're just in and some teachers are so keen, we even hear about them during their summer vacation. Uh, what's it going to look like this year? What are we going to do? We can't give up on Terry. And some of those teachers are uh, cancer survivors or are battling cancer as well. So a lot of schools will rally behind their teachers and their staff as well. So it's, it's a good way for those kids to connect and do something, you know, in a positive sense. Let's talk about the run. Yes, let's talk about it. <laughs> so because it's COVID and it's, uh, we are gone virtual this year. So um, we have a theme that I uh, mentioned earlier, it's one day your way. But the biggest thing is because we can't gather in our normal um, you know, locations that we would at any of our runs in New Brunswick or PEI, 
we need you to find your own way to raise funds and go out and celebrate Terry Fox. So you can do it by walking, biking, running, whatever you want to do. You can do jumping jacks. By swim. yourself? By or yourself or within your, your family bubble or within a workplace event is, can is also... Is there a number, like no more than 10 people or no... Or well, outside you're not supposed to gather more than 50 people. Okay, but, so... But yeah. so you, every provincial guidelines are different, correct? Yes, so right, Ontario yeah. to BC to mm -hmm. New Brunswick would be yeah. different. So as long yeah. as you're following the parameters that have been set out by our health yeah. authorities within the province um, where you are, um, you can do that. But the biggest thing is because we have a lot of run day uh, donations that will happen that will not happen this year. That's what I was going to say because I, I, I think it was last year uh, I was interviewing uh, uh, Carol Baker. Yes. And uh, people were coming in with their money and with their cash yes. to a certain point, to a certain start point, right? Yes. And prior to. And prior to, yes. Yeah. And yeah. then post uh, run date as well. So this year we're asking people to go on www.terryfoxrun.org, okay. um, register, right. and make a donation online. It's the safest way um, and um, if anybody needs assistance with that they can actually contact myself or one of my staff at our office um, and there's a toll-free number for that as well and we have a direct line for mm -hmm. that as well which is 458-2618 and we're located in Fredericton um, as well 605 Prospect Street but we're there to assist anybody with any type of donation we get calls all the time people do in memoriams all the time to Terry Fox for, you do? for loved ones that have passed away yes we're actually having quite a few of those people call the office lately mm -hmm. um, so we do very mm -hmm. well with that as well so there's different ways to donate you can mail a check into the office you just google it you can find the address um, but online is the most simple as way exactly and actually our revenue is actually up um, within my region from July of 2019 to 2020 right now with That's online donations so, excellent so yeah so it's it's looking good but we need everybody more than ever this year um, with COVID and uh, with a Terry Fox event that's you know right on the horizon not very far away, September 20th, um, but we need everyone to rally together and keep that revenue going in because we need to keep helping people that are diagnosed with this terrible disease. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't give up because Terry asked us to keep it going without him. And uh, we have to do that. We made him a promise and we need to fulfill that promise. What are you going to do? Well, I could do a whole <laughs> bunch of things, actually. So I will probably bike uh, will you? out in the yeah. fresh air and wear my Adidas uh, shirt yeah. that uh, Adidas Foundation this year is donating a million dollars. They created uh, one-of-a-kind Terry Fox shirts. There's another one getting launched the end of this month and another one in September. And uh, the ones of late have um, Terry Fox quotes on the T-shirts. And there's an, uh, they released a replica of his shoe as well. There's another one coming up. Really? So you have to watch for that in Adidas on social media and whatnot. Um, and if anyone wants to know more about it, they can contact my office. Um, so yes, I'm going after a pair of those shoes, the running shoe actually, um, so I can wear it to my gym when I go to work out and when I remember Terry. But uh, Excellent. it's selling out. It's, it's been crazy. <coughs> Yeah, it's Perfect. doing well. Perfect. And we have also some amazing 40th anniversary uh, merchandise this year that um, is very premium um, uh, quality. Um, so uh -huh. if anybody's interested, there's a hoodie, uh, there's dry fit shirts, there's ball caps, there's toques masks that everyone needs right now, Terry Fox masks. So um, we will have those um, probably in a few weeks time. So if anyone's interested in any of that, they can contact the office And as they well. just contact you? They can talk, contact us, <laughs> but they can also go online. But I've I already see. been told that it's almost selling out online with the hoodie. And that was in the first day that it was launched online. So it's in huge demand. Isn't that so amazing? Yeah, yeah, it is. Good news. <laughs> Really good news. Yeah. Really gives good people news. hope, gives people courage. And, uh, and don't you feel that that's what we need today? I mean, you know. Oh, we do, especially <laughs> during these times, yeah. And we want people to know that we have not given up. You know, you we, want Terry to we know are we are not. still we, we're still here. We are not canceling any events. Yeah, it's, true. it's a go. Yeah. It's a go. Yeah. yeah. We're still here. And we're here to help everybody and raise those much needed funds. That's excellent. Excellent. So this year being a little bit different than years before uh, you the revenue has not gone down and I, I, I you know no. I don't want to not say the word interest or not say the word care but I mean it's the revenue that counts in order Absolutely. you know and that's how the care is going to be continuing on mm -hmm. is with the revenue coming in absolutely so we know this year is going to be a difficult year and that's why we're pushing people um, 
and making trying to make them realize that if it's twenty dollars or whatever the amount that that you can afford to do please give to the terry fox foundation and and this is the fortieth anniversary and keep those funds coming in you, you know that's a very good point it doesn't have to be thousands of dollars no, if it's no. ten dollars whatever $10, you can afford $10, to give that's all gonna yes, help yes whatever you can afford to give that's all, that's all we ask because every dollar counts like terry asked way back you know in uh, in nineteen eighty when he started that marathon of hope so today, even if we had a dollar from every Canadian, I mean, just it, there you go. Think about how much revenue we could have. Yeah, um, you know, and it's it's, you know, it's a cup of coffee at Tim Hortons, let's say, for an example. Exactly, right? So you know, yeah. even those little bits, and yeah. if it's a family of five, you know, make a family contribution or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, every dollar counts. Perfect. Okay, we're going to take a break, and then I'm going to be back with Gwen Smith Walsh. And we're going to be uh, talking a little bit more about the famous Terry Fox Foundation, Terry Fox Run. I can't think of any better foundation that, uh, that's out there. Mm. So let's put it this way, saving lives. That's what we say in our foundation, actually. Is it? Yeah, so I'm a provincial director, so we call ourselves, our acronym is PDs, and people say, well, what do you do for a living? And my friend in Nova Scotia, Barb, always used to say, who's recently retired from the foundation, I save lives. Exactly. So we fundraise yeah. to save lives. That's we what do. you do. That's we actually what you do. do. Yeah, we're fundraisers. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to be back with Gwen right after these messages. Be back in a few moments. Welcome back. John Higgins Live. My guest is Gwen Smith Walsh. Gwen is the provincial director of the Terry Fox Foundation. What a foundation. So good to have you here today, Gwen. I mean, it's it's amazing. You have told me more in this show than I well, I knew about Terry Fox. Of course yeah. we all did, but I didn't, you know, you you, uh, you really have uh, informed me. Uh, uh, I still can't get over that if the research had been T today back then that he would still be alive. I, you know, I, uh, anyway. And that's the same case for many other people. If you yeah. think back in the day that were diagnosed with cancer from, uh, you know, different forms and whatnot, you know, technology, if it, everything stayed the same back in that day, we wouldn't have a cell phone, we wouldn't have that's smart true. TVs that's or whatnot. True, yeah. So technology's involved, so so has cancer research, and mm -hmm. of course they're through those funds that we, we keep mentioning. Yeah. yeah, that. Uh, well, when we have to keep mentioning it, because if there's no funds, there's no foundation. And there's no research to help And there's no, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah, there's no foundation to provide funds for the research that needs to be done, which has taken us from there to here. Yes. From where when Terry was alive. Absolutely. September 20th. That's the community run day. Yes. All right. How's that going to work? So we have different fundraising campaigns. So mm -hmm. this is the initial one that started with Terry asking for us to gather together and uh, have community runs. Um, so September 20th, 2020 is our uh, national community run day. Um, so this year, like I mentioned earlier, uh, we are virtual and one day your way, but you will still go and do the same thing as you always done, but you're going to do it in your own bubble or by yourself one day your way and still donating funds to cancer research. So we've evolved from those community runs, but September 20th, you will see that um, advertised uh, through posters in your community, on social media. Um, we're very large on social media, especially during COVID and whatnot. Um, and television stations like this, will have PSAs running on different radio stations. Um, but if you are not sure about something, again, then you go to the Terry Fox Foundation website and um, find New Brunswick, um, and you can find any of those runs that you would have had before. So there's some in Harvey, St. Stephen, St. Andrews. We have a new run back here in St. Andrews this year. Uh, Beryl Smith is the mm -hmm. run organizer for that. Carol Baker is the one in St. Stephen. But we're all over the place. We are from one end of the province to the other. We're in French communities. We're in English communities. So Terry Fox is everywhere, and as well as in PEI. Last year, you went to Carol. She was at uh, she was at the center. She was where we all went. Okay? Yes. Okay. And you paid, and then Carol said, "Go in your run, or yeah. you know." Yeah, you donate whatever you would want. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then you go do your walk or that's your, your run walk. Or whatever. Okay, that's yes. right. Yes. So that's going to be different this year. Yes. Um, 
Now, Carol's situation as one example is a little bit different because she's so well known in the community mm -hmm. and she has the same annual donors year mm -hmm. after year. She's yep. a huge fundraiser for us. Um, so some of those people, or for most of those people, will still be giving Carol their, their yes. checks from right. their businesses yep. and her neighbors and her yep. friends and whatnot because she is a, a cancer survivor herself. Uh -huh. So, um, and she's a very popular lady, I, I would imagine, in St. Stephen she because is. she has a thriving personality mm -hmm. for a lady her age. <laughs> She's in her 80s. Yeah, I know. Um, but she's like a, has a heart of a 20 year old and the energy oh, yes. of a 20 year old. And the energy of a Yes. Say. So people can still contribute to Carol if they feel comfortable uh, to drop off their revenue or give her checks or whatnot. Um, I'm, she'll take her own safety protocols to do with COVID and whatnot, but you can still do that. But traditionally, that's how we, we used to do it is go in and mm -hmm. show up an event. But again, online donations is the easiest way. Your tax receipt is automated. Oh, yeah. You put in your information. It's a very safe. Safe uh, place to do exactly. any donations or yeah. whatnot, and also um, you can do it through our office as well. Right. So on that day, you don't have to say, "Okay, we're going to start at two o'clock." You can go whenever you want. Whenever you want. Whenever you want. And you can do it the day before, the day after. It's a suggested yeah. date, yeah. but um, we do it in Terry Fox spirit then, of course. But it doesn't mean to say, let's say that day you don't feel well or you weren't able to because of another commitment or something. Then you can still do one day your way. The I following just, Saturday, the following Sunday. Gwen, I just thought of something. What? If you're out and you're doing the Terry Fox run in your little bubble, mm -hmm. or, or even by yourself, where it would be a great idea to have your Terry Fox t-shirt on. Absolutely. So people would know, hey, there goes a Terry Fox yes. runner there now. We have very special 40th anniversary shirts this year. So every year our ah. foundation produces a new shirt. Okay. So this year, actually the shirt is remarkable. It's Terry is running and it looks like he's running through Canada and the map is kind of in the background. Right. It's, it's a white shirt. It has the 40th anniversary logo and you can oh. get those in a regular shirt for $20, which is pretty affordable. It is. And a dry fit that usually is somewhere around fifty to sixty dollars or only thirty dollars and they will be in short supply this year. Wow. Just one more time, where can you get them? Call your office? You can call my office and yeah. you can also order it online. Okay. But what I do advise is not go through the shopping cart, is actually to go in and find your run like St. Stephen or Bath or Harvey or St. Andrews. So that run site stays within our region and the funds get directed here to in the this Brunswick. region. I have to tell everybody this. Gwen said, John, don't make me cry. <laughs> I, I promised, I promised I wouldn't, but in your own mind, you've told me a bit about Terry, okay, what's he mean to, to you? You look, you look at Terry and you think, my gosh, number one, what a boy, you know. Very good looking boy, very athletic, very determined. He, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it almost seems like an impossibility that this boy was able to do what he'd done um, on that highway doing that. I wouldn't have the determination to do that. No, exactly. And I don't know anyone, actually. I don't know of anybody that, that would. would ever do that. It's, it's like God created a very, very special person right. uh, and that he was put on earth for a purpose. And I think his own mother, Betty, actually spoke about that, that, that Terry had was a special gift on earth and that he was put here for a reason. And I mean, it's, it's obvious because look well, where we are look, today. I was gonna look say. what he's done for so <coughs> many people. Exactly. You know, we have to be so thankful for what he did, um, what he aspired to do. And in fact, I know his mother told him that you're crazy, you can't do that. You're not going to run um, across the country to raise money for cancer research. Well, Gwen, you stop and think about that. Mm. If you have this young guy come to you, all right? And, and say, told me that? Well, and he's got a prosthetic. Yes. You know, hi, I'm going to run across Canada. No. And you know, he trained for 10 months on that prosthetic limb. His family told stories about Terry face planting and falling. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, he fell multiple times. Oh, so I did not know that. He had to figure out a way because prosthetic limb back then what Terry had there was a bucket that he would put his stump into his leg and then there was a belt that went around uh, so he had to propel his leg forward and that's why he had that little skip to his walk yes, right yes because he had to figure out how he was going to do that you know and and that stump was bleeding he was blistered he was sore it actually broke at one point in Fredericton and Menzies prosthetics that is still around today actually 
um, fixed his prosthetic limb. And the gentleman that passed away not so long ago, when I went to his funeral, actually, they said what well, was his his proudest moment uh, as being in that industry was fixing Terry Fox's leg. So, yeah, pretty remarkable. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Have, uh, have you met his brother? Yes, I've met Daryl, and yeah. uh, I've met Fred many, many times. So Fred yeah. does school tours, actually, in our region. Fred's his brother? Uh, Fred. Oldest brother. His Terry's oldest, oldest brother. brother. Terry's Fred. oldest brother. Yes. Okay. Yep. okay. So yeah. Fred is kind of the representative of the family. So Fred has been in our region many times. He's been in St. Stephen visiting schools, uh, not last year, the year before. Um, he's not been in the St. Andrews area yet, um, but won't be this year, but the following year. So I organize Fred's tours for him in New really? Brunswick and PEI. He goes yes. to school. He talks about Terry. He shares his story. Um, and then he always loves to come to the Maritimes and, and visit everybody here. He yeah. loves the people. Um, and, and he resonates with those kids and with staff. Does he? So, yes. Yeah. So he's here every fall. Every fall Fred comes. But this year, of course, with COVID, he's not here. But he'll be yeah. back next year. And, like, and, and you said he was with Terry on the run. Well, right? Fred was a little bit with him. Now, Daryl is his younger brother. Oh, okay. yeah. um, so um, actually, Terry's the third child. Um, so Daryl, I met Daryl when we had Confederation Bridge run in 2015, and then he was with, um, I was with him as well for the, um, the awarding of the funding at UMB St. John um, four years ago uh -huh. to Dr. Anthony Ryman. So um, he actually is um, a representative of the Terry Fox Research Institute, but he's still directly involved um, with, with the family and the foundation. There's nieces and nephews um, that are um, Terry's nieces and nephews. The family are all still involved uh, they're employees of the foundation um, so they they keep it going for sure uh, Judith the, the the only girl in the family Terry's sister uh, she is with the legacy fund as well um, which Carol Baker actually is um, on the pamphlet and is all across this country and she's a, a testimonial to the legacy fund to go to uh, the Terry Fox Research Institute and Terry Fox Foundation so if you wanted to you know in your will contribute uh, X amount of dollars to um, the in foundation? Your will to the foundation you can do that and Carol and her husband were both uh, part of that actually yeah and still are do you know what in one of the things that impresses me the most it was everything you're talking about, everything about Terry. And I just want to get this out to everybody. The money that is raised goes directly to research. Yes. 79% of 79%. Yeah, and we are actually the leading funder of research globally and within Canada. We contribute the most funds to research because that's solely what exactly. we do. The, the, reason, the reason I just want to point that out, Gwendolyn, is because how many times you see on television, okay, mm -hmm. please help this, your donation, please help this, your donation. And have you ever thought, you know, well, where's that money really going? Yeah. Some people ask that question. Do but they? You'll realize, though, as well, I mean, those commercials on TV cost thousands or millions of dollars. So that money is You going. will not see those from us because Terry asked that we have as much money as possible to go to research, not to waste it on advertisements, um, corporate, uh, you know, um, supports or sponsorships or anything. He said that he didn't want other people to use those reasons um, to be part of the Marathon of Hope or for research. So we still stick to Terry's morals and values and what he asked from day one and we do not deviate from them. So that's why you don't see, and when we do have something that's on TV and you'll see it possibly um, in our region um, this year, it's all donated. Gwen, he was a very smart person, very determined. Terry, yes. Yeah. And very... A kinesiologist, yes. He was in studying kinesiology at Simon was he really? Fraser, yes. Yes, he yeah. was. And playing on a varsity yeah. basketball team. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, don't, you know, this is where I want the money to go. There was just, there's, he's no big fan beer. This, uh, every He was cent. the first. He's the first person to start something like this and come up with this concept because now everyone's... How old was he then? He was... 20-something? Um, 20, 20 years old. Gwen, so, holy yeah. Lord. And now everyone's emulating what Terry started. There's a yep. run for this. There's a run yes, for there that. Is. There's yep. a run for mm -hmm. everything now. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine he came up with this concept? And, and Yes, and developed it on his own. Yeah. And, um, and, and we are further ahead today um, because Much of an so. idea that, that he had come up with. I mean, we have 
more than just the community run they came up with and the school program, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we do special events as well. But again, everything comes back to Terry and what Terry wanted and his morals and his values. And uh, we uphold those um, today, 100%. I can't say how good it has, has been to have you on this show. It's been great to talk about it. It's, uh, you know, so much I, I've learned. I knew who Terry was, you mm -hmm. know, like a lot of. But and we need to keep teaching everybody more that's about so true. Terry because that's so true. Sometimes people forget, and we all have busy mm -hmm. lives and that's right. whatnot. Yeah. Um, but we need it. Yeah, we certainly. Yeah, do. we're not going to advance the way that we want to and, and yeah. until we find a cure, and uh, we need to do it for Terry because he asked us to. We could hear some ads. For Absolutely. You yes. For free. Yes. On CHCO, uh, because let's this do is, it. Let's do it. Yeah. This is such a this is such a foundation. Such a you know. It, thank you so much for oh, coming. Oh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. And I want everybody to get out and run you know, or walk run, or walk, talk, bike, whatever, cartwheels, bike. whatever you like. <laughs> exactly. But importantly, is to make sure that you you donate anything that you can afford to do. Um, because it is for research. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So Terry started this as a, a fundraiser. Yes, he did. Yes. So 40 yeah. years, 40th anniversary. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Okay. And, and what's the website again if people want to know? Um, TerryFoxRun.org. Perfect. Okay. Gwen, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Good luck. I know thank it's going to be a success. Me. No yeah. problem. I'm excited. Perfect. I'm excited. That's going to do us. Thank you for watching the show. I'm John Higgins, and we'll be back with you next week right here on John Higgins Live.